Good morning and welcome to Dobbins Memorial United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Waleska and I'm hold on, I'm having like malfunctions here a little. Okay. Okay, let's try this again. Good morning <laughs> and welcome to Dobbins 20. I decided why not to do a different kind of challenge. So in 2021, we decided to invite you to join me and the prayer warriors of this church to join us on a 10 for 10. This is a 31 days of prayer where we're going to be praying for 10 minutes a day for 10 prayer requests. The prayer requests are listed on the website and also on our Facebook page. So if you didn't start it on January 1st, it's fine. Today is a good day to start. So go to the website, dubbinchurch.org, and look for the list or go to our Facebook page and it's also listed there. Um, like always, um, I would like to give a big thank you for all of you that continue to support our ministry and be part of what God is doing in this congregation and in this community. Um, so go to DobbinsChurch.org um, and click on the gift tab and uh, you can bless us with your gifts um, more. Um, if you don't have access to the website, you can send your gift on your offerings via mail to 330 Union Avenue, the Lancaster, New Jersey 08075. May God continue to bless you and may God continue to um, um, open um, the uh, windows of heaven in blessings for you and thank you for your generosity. And please continue to pray for those that are sick, those that are grieving or in need. If you have a prayer request, uh, please go to our website, dubbinschurch.org. Uh, <coughs> let us pray. Father of light, unchanging God, today once again you reveal to us the word may flesh. Your light shines through the darkness, united in one spirit, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us worship. Lord, the light of your love is shining in of the darkness shine Jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me on me
keep their brightness so our faces display your likeness ever changing glory to glory mirror near may our lives tell your story Shine, Jesus, shine. Still shine. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Beauty, let me, this heart adore.
Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together. of Oriental bearing gifts we traverse the far field and fountain foreign mountain following yonder star Father's arms are open wide behind your 
regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling Oh, come to the altar Oh, come to the altar The Father's arms are open wide Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Isn't he wonderful Sing hallelujah Christ is risen Bow down before him For he is Lord of all Hallelujah Christ is risen Oh, what a Savior is in the Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Father's arms are open Forgiveness was bought with The precious blood of Jesus Christ Bear your cross as you wait for the crowd Tell the world of the treasure you found Amen. The time of King Herod and Magi from the east came to Jerusalem where is the one who has been born king of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. Amen, amen. We have all come to worship him this morning. Praise God. 
Before I start the message this morning, I just want to um, say a, two um, short announcements. I know that sometimes people um, log in a little later after the announcements are done, and this is very important, so I wanted to do it now um, before the message just to make sure that everybody knows that. Um, um, I'm going to be um, out for the next um, two weeks. I'm going to be on a spiritual renewal leave, so please continue to pray for me during this time. Next week, um, the service is um, going to be recorded, and um, our bishop, Bishop Troll, will have the message. So I hope that all of you connect and listen to um, the amazing message that he has for all of us. And also... On um, January 17th will be our second reopening, uh, which means that on the 17th, um, you can come and worship in person again. Um, um, like always, we have to take all the necessary um, guidelines, measures, and precautions to make sure that everybody is safe. So if you feel comfortable um, coming back to church, um, please, on January 17th, we will be here doing our service live once again at 10.30 in the morning. Try to come a little early so we can um, locate everybody. Um, and we are looking forward um, to worship together again with all of you. If something changed from here <laughs> to then um, because of maybe a different mandate, we will contact you. But so far, it looks like um, this uh, will not affect um, our reopening plan, so we are um, um, excited to have you here on January 17th to worship together here um, in person here live with us. And I am very happy. Um, this week is, is here, and uh, for those that celebrate uh, the Three Kings tradition, um, you probably are also really happy because on January 5th, the three came from the East to bring gifts to all the kids. In our culture, in the Hispanic culture, all of us that celebrate three kings are ready for a night of celebration, kind of like Christmas Eve. Um, and then that night, the kids come out with uh, shoe boxes. They fill the shoe boxes with grass. They put that shoebox under the bed, so when the three kings come with the camels, the camels have something that they, because they have traveled so far, we put a bowl of, with water so they can drink. Um, I have to let you know, um, and probably Liz can witness that, they are a, real, uh, a, a, a little messy, and uh, when you get up the next day, um, the kids look under the bed, and they see not only the grass and the water all over, but also the gifts that the three kings have brought them. Um, that is uh, our tradition, and uh, I am happy and glad that I can share that with you. And maybe next year, um, you will be also ready, and then you want to try it too. Um, I know that Liz is always um, expecting. So for some of us, um, Christmas is over. Uh, we celebrated Jesus' birth, uh, birthday on the 25th. We exchanged gifts. Uh, we have all the dinners and gatherings. And um, um, I know that it were probably a little different than other years. Maybe not. Who knows? But we say bye to 2020. Thank God. And we say hello to 2021. Um, and now soon, if they are not all ready, the decorations are going to be back in the box put them back in the basement until next year. But the Christmas story is not over. The birth of Jesus is just a reminder that we are just at the beginning of a lifelong journey, a journey that will change the relationship between God, the creator, and God's creation forever. A journey that it's always towards the rest of Jesus' story, his life, his teachings, ministry, death, and resurrection. According to the Gospel of Matthew, uh, Magi, the Zoroastrian priests from uh, Persia, noticed the new star in the sky. 
the Magi were expecting that something very important was going to happen. So they were looking for signs in the sky, in nature, something that will announce it to lead them to the newborn king that they were expecting. And when they saw the star, they followed it. You know, God can make a new star shine in the sky, but if no one is looking and willing to follow, then nothing is going to happen. You see, God is constantly sending a sign that leads us to him to the real purpose of our life, the life that only God can offer. But are you looking for the right signs? Are you willing to follow it? I am sure that looking at millions and millions of stars can be overwhelming. And I know that our situations can also be overwhelming. But we need to be in the lookout for those signs that will lead us to the light, to freedom, to a better place, to find joy, peace, hope, and love. God sent a star to lead the Magi, but the star was only a sign to lead them to something greater. God is constantly sending us signs that lead us to Jesus Christ, so like the Magi, we can also worship. So we can recognize in him the power not only to rule, but to save. To heal physically and emotionally and spiritually. To forgive and to be forgiven. To be free of all shame and all guilt. To bring us from darkness to light. My question to you this morning is, where do you see signs of God's presence in your life? Are you willing to follow those signs? It may sound easy when you read in the scripture, but it was not that easy. It was not an easy task. You know, the Magi's didn't live precisely around the corner from Jesus. Um, the Magi took a route that was more than 1,200 miles. And it will take a caravan to go there. And it will take them more than 100 days to get there. They will have traveled 100 days or more than 100 days to get there to worship. And then more than 100,000 miles back in order to go back home. But the journey for them was worth it. It didn't come with a small personal cost. It cost them financially, personally. But they were determined to honor the newborn king. That the star were telling the birth of the long-awaited Messiah. They wanted to witness the incarnation God with us, Emmanuel. God sent more than a sign. God came himself to guide us, to lead us, to help us, to save us. You may be asking yourself, where do I find God's light now? Well, when we think about the condition Bring the light of Christ into this darkness. To help people to see through the fog of confusion and distractions in a culture of increasing individualism and self-reliance. We, the church, has the mandate of Christ to offer the light of the gospel to all people. Christ is the light of the nation who came to offer salvation to all people. Sisters, we are called to be stars who help lead others along the path towards Christ, to show God's light by the way we live, by the way we speak, and by the way 
that we act. You'll find the light of God present wherever people love God and each other. When people care for the poor, teach the children, feed the hungry, build homes for homeless, give a shoulder to cry on, and stand up for justice. If you believe in Jesus, you will find the light of Christ in you, and more importantly, Jesus' light needs to shine through you. You will find the light of Jesus in the Scripture, in prayer, and in communion. As Dorothy Day wrote on her own conversion, we cannot love God. We cannot love God unless we love each other. And to love, we must know each other. We know him in the breaking of bread. And we know each we are not alone anymore. Even with a crust where there is even with a crust where there is companionship for all. The message